Greetings everybody, Eric's UK here, once again, with another Games I have played vid. Tonight we are continuing um, Dungeons and Dragons with AD&D 2nd Edition. If you saw my last video about the 1st Edition of the game, um, I got into that probably a year or so before 2nd Edition dropped. <clears throat> and it took me a little while to get um, the oomph to buy into 2nd Edition. Um, having basically just got hold of first, I didn't really want to just be changing editions so soon. <coughs> but I did. Uh, mainly because my friend Chris um, bought into it. Um, despite the fact not being a D&D &D player, really. Um, and we had some good games, and I quite liked it. The big thing with second edition was that it took the original first edition system, and it fixed a lot of the problems um, mainly how it was written it was a mu it was basically the same rule system but it was clearer to understand and you could get your head around it a lot more and um, I think it came at just the right point um, to kind of get picked up by a lot of people um, it really took off for us big time I, well, i just finished school, actually. Um, I was 16, and walking through town, I ended up seeing a ad in a shop window looking for players for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, and that's how I met um, a number of my gaming buddies for the next few years. Um, it was, it'd been put out by a chap named Terry, who he and his family had moved down from Blackpool, um, where he had played second edition and he really wanted to get into playing again. So I went along, uh, had a chat with him, felt like a job interview, oddly, um, that's how I've always thought of it, uh, but I offered to be the DM and um, using the Dragonlance setting, which I am, I was then a big fan of, and um, we basically ran several campaigns over the next probably six or seven years. Um, myself primarily, but uh, my friend Chris ran the original Dark Sun, which was very, very popular. Um, my friend Jason also ran Dark Sun under second edition. Um, we tried the Birthright campaign setting. Um, do we really play the others? Uh, we used Ravenloft a little bit. Um, not as a setting itself, but somewhere where our characters could go. Um, especially when someone had the idea of a gothic sort of horror scenario. Didn't really fit whatever campaign setting they were using. Um, and on a couple of occasions, I created some homebrew stuff, which worked really well. We had some fantastic times with this game. Um, I can remember my friend Big Dave, uh, poor chap, uh, he ended up going through something like six or seven characters in one session to the point he had a book of characters and when one died he just pulled a random one out of the pack and kept going. I can't remember why he died so much, um, but it was one of those um, moments that we always sort of like talk about whenever we think of the nostalgia of the old um, gaming group. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but it was the sort of system that worked really, really well for um, pretty much any setting you wanted. Um, and one of the things that I really liked about second edition over um, more recent editions at the time was the fact that you couldn't power game it. You could. I know people argue this, but I never once saw an opportunity while we were doing second edition to twink a character, um, to you know, uh, make it overpowered. Um, you played a character, and it was. I think there was a lot more role playing in second edition than there was from third onwards. Not to say there wasn't, but you know, but you just couldn't um, cherry pick stats or skills or spells um you had you didn't have things like traits and proficiencies and stuff like that really um 
proficiency isn't the right word because second edition had proficiencies as skills. Um, I'm thinking sort of like feats, meaning feats, like Pathfinder hats. So you couldn't make uh, a silly character. And I think it took us a long time when we changed the third edition to get used to things like that. Um, but used to make uh, a nice, simple game system. And oddly, um, we've tried... Um, Dark Sun was definitely one of our favourite settings for the game. And oddly... How can I put this? Um, it was a setting that they, they started off really well with. And then they, like Dragonlance, they basically fluffed it up big time by trying to move too much forwards and making changes. Um, and we tried to uh, change Dark Sun into other game systems. I tried run The only one I ever found that really worked was you could turn it into Rollmaster quite well. Um, but we tried it in other games. We tried it with third edition for a start and it just doesn't work. Um, it was one of those settings that was built heavily around the second edition rule system and the feel of that system. Um, as I say, we played second edition, I would say six or seven years, and then it changed, and uh, through to my friend Jason, that's when we started getting into Vampire the Masquerade, and that sort of took over for the next five years. Um, before, sort of, Terry decided he was getting too old for this sort of thing, you know, with work and whatever. Because he was about six, I think he's about 16 years older than us. Um, and that's sort of, that's when that particular group broke up. Um, a few years before we started doing Vampire, um, I created a second gaming group. Um, the group with Terry used to play on uh Thursday and Saturday nights I think it was we used to do two games a week um and then it went down to one but I I I I have this thing and I still I still have it now which is um I like to game with people who aren't um experienced in role playing um I th I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that once you play a game system for so long with the same people, they know what the monsters are, they know what the spells do, they know how things work. And I think there is a kind of loss of fantasy and enjoyment with that. Um, and I wanted another gaming group. Um, so I started another one up with some other friends that I'd come to know uh, around about... I guess, 91 or 92. Um, and that would be the core of where our current gaming group comes from. And I have... Uh, I'm going to end this <laughs> with an amusing story. Or stories. Um, <laughs> one of these chaps was a guy named Mark. Uh, who was a friend of a, one of the guys really playing. Um and he had really wanted to play Dungeons and & Dragons. Uh, and so we said, well, you know, come in. And at the time, I was running a homebrew setting. Um, and they were a few levels in. And where he sort of joined them, they were hunting down an evil... was was the evil villain of that particular campaign. Um, uh, a, a warlord known as General Tagus. And he had this fortress in this, like... Uh, volcanic wasteland area and they were trying to uh, get into that uh, and they encountered a uh, magma golem as one of the guardians and this was unfortunately Mark's first gaming session and his reaction was I grapple the magma golem which as I'm sure you can imagine did not go down very well and resulted in his second character <laughs> within like an hour of starting his first ever game session. And Mark had some very terrible luck in things like that. Uh, he loved playing rogues. He was a thief and he was a sort of player who always wanted to be the sneak 
Um, he would nick gold off of other characters. Um, he would go off on his own and do stuff, which was, uh, in a way, a little bit of a pain in the ass. But um, it made for some interesting games. But he had such terrible luck in any AD and D game he played in. Um, so I'm trying to think of a couple of the, the examples. Um, one, he found a ring that um, shrunk him. Um, and in panic, he cut his own finger off, grew back to normal size, and then found out that actually you needed to be shrunk to get to the next part of the dungeon because you had to go for a tiny hole in the floor. Uh, <laughs> um, he had a, a statue. My friend Gary ran a game, and we had a statue, one of these big like monkey statues with gemstone eyes. He decided he was going to climb up this statue and steal one of the gemstones, um, and the statue animated, clobbered him and killed him. Um, Things like that. And he, you would always get him to fall for, for these sort of tricks. Uh, and these are the sort of memories um, <laughs> that we had with Second Edition. We had a lot of fun. Um, second Edition, I don't think we ever took seriously. Um, not really. Um, it, was all like, it was all like little silly things. Um, but it made some awesome memories. Um, and sometimes I think second edition is one of those games I would like to dig out of the woodwork and run again for people. Um, I thought about that after my video with, about first edition, but I might just do it when the lockdown here ends and we can go back to normal gaming. I might do a surprise one or two part session where we play second edition again um, and just see how, uh, <laughs> see how it works now. Um, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm dragging on far too long here, so let's sort my camera. In. So, did you have any experience with Second Edition? Um, was it AD and D Second Ed one of your favourite games? Was it, in fact, you know, your first GMing, your first playing, one of your favourite systems? Um, what were the cool moments that you had in playing that? Um, drop me a comment below, and uh, I'd love to see what you come up with. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you have a nice day and good gaming. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.